remember to do start. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Cool. Okay. So um, I've noticed that our beloved leader, that's something, so our beloved leader, John, he always starts his book club stating that what we are doing here or something. So I'm going to do that. Um, so this is the ninth cohort for the book club at for the book um, advanced R. And today we're going to go over chapter four called subsetting. So, so he always does these things when he talks. So anyway, I'm so annoyed. Um, so let me share my screen. And let's see. Share. Okay. Do you want me to go over this first and just say that we are covered for the following weeks? Or do you want me to just start, Olivier? You're muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about it. No, you're good, like starting with subsetting. I think it's fine. All right. All right. Yeah, thanks for doing right, it. No, of course. Okay, so then let's start this chapter. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that everybody can see this. Okay, so chapter four is about subsetting. And the learning objectives here are four. Mainly, we're going to learn about six ways to subset atomic vectors. Um, depending on the information that we have and that we want to um, get from our uh, subsetting. We're going to learn about the three main subsetting operators, which are the double square brackets, the single square bracket, and the dollar sign. We're going to also learn how to how subsetting works with different vector types. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to learn how subsetting can be combined with assignment two to make our lives much easier. So let's begin. So let's start uh, with how we deal with selecting multiple elements. So we're going to start with atomic vectors, and then we're going to move on to lists, how we do this with lists, and then with matrices and arrays. And finally, with data frames and tables. So when we just have a single atomic vector, like the way, uh, like this example that we have here with our uh, vector x. There are six ways that we can subset atomic vectors. So the first one is with a positive integer indices. So if we have with our uh, vector x, we can then just including the single brackets, uh, include them in a concatenate. I never know if it's concatenated or combined. I suppose it's the same thing, right? with a combined vector of just four and one for elements, uh, two elements here, we are essentially saying that we just want the fourth and the first element of this vector, of x vector. So whatever we put inside those brackets, this is just going to extract um, the position of those elements inside that uh, that vector. So in this case, it's going to be the fourth element, which is 4.4, and then the first one, which is 1.1. Then if we duplicate these numbers inside the square bracket, it's going to just return the same value because we're saying, I want the second position and the, or the second element, and I want the second element too. So then it returns the same, uh, the same value. Um, if we use, so when we use um, decimal numbers in here, they're going to be truncated to integers, and they're going to, if I remember correctly, um, rounded to the lowest um, digit. So in this case, 3.2 becomes 3, and 3.8 becomes 3, too. So this is giving me, um, like if we have, I were saying the third element and the third element again, um, so this is saying essentially, give me the third position or the third element and the third element again, which is 3.3. Um, then if I include negative integer indices, so this means that I don't want those elements or those positions in my returning vector. 
So I cannot do the minus inside the square brackets. That does not work. The minus has to be outside to signify I want these excluded. So in this case, I don't want the first and the third element. Um, so it's just going to give me the second and the fourth. If I have logical, or if I want to subset by using logical vectors, I can. And this is going to be like true means yes, give me the first element, the second element too, the second position, but don't give me the third position because I'm setting it as false. So it's saying first position, second position, and fourth position, which is exactly what I have here, or elements. I don't know why I keep saying position. Then I can also include conditions here, like saying, Within my my or with my first with my x vector, I just want all the positions that are um, where x is less than three. So that's gonna be the first and the second element, which is exactly what I have here. And I could have also done uh, like set a condition inside itself, like making it a its own vector, right? Like saying the condition is x over 2.5 and then subset by that by that, by that um, object called cond condition. So then it's going to give me exactly whatever it is that I set up as that condition, which is x, uh, any x that is over 2.5. So then it's going to be 3 and 4, right? Give me the third and the fourth element in that vector. The other thing, um, the other thing that is important to no, is this recycling rules. So these recycling rules, it only means that when you have two vectors and you want to subset one versus the other, or one from the other, I don't know how you say that in English, but you want to use one vector, obviously, to subset another one, then, and if your vectors are not the same length, then the shorter of the two is going to be recycled over and over and over until you finish the length of the longer vector. And it's easy to understand if one of your vectors is one, because obviously it's just repeating one, 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 one. But if you have two and three, for example, then that's when things start to get a little messy. But if you understand the recycling rules, then you're good to go. So let's say, for example, that we have here uh, our vector again, and we just want to subset false and true, obviously. So we only have two, our subsetting vector only has two elements and our X vector or original vector has four elements. So this is only going to return two, which is easy, right? It's easy because the inside one is shorter than the outside one, but it's the same thing as if we were saying false, true, false, true, because it's just repeating itself. So if we had an X vector of length 10, for example, and we only have our shorter subsetting vector that has two elements. So it's going to keep repeating this two, two, two until we cover the entire 10 elements inside our vector. So it would be false, true, false, true, false, true, five times until we, um, we use all the 10 elements in our vector. So I hope that's a little clear. The problem is when this one is, well, not the problem, but you have to sort of like, really pay attention when one of them is um, like, they're not like, it's like two and three, right? Like one of them is not a multiple of the other one. Uh, um, yeah, that's when you have to really start paying attention to how that works because it will stop. Okay, then how do we deal with missing values? With missing values, um, if you include NA inside your subsetting vector, that NA is going to come back in your uh, resulting vector. So these NAs are repeated. So if here I'm essentially saying I want to subset the a vector with NA, so I, I don't want anything here, or I want an NA. I shouldn't say I don't want anything because that's not. I want an NA, and then the second element is going to be true. So that's the second position. So then again, this is going to be going this is going to be recycled in our x vector because our x vector has four um, has four values. So then it's going to be NA. The second position is going to be true or the second element. And then again, repeat it, NA. 
and then the fourth one is going to be um, true again. So then that's what we have with our missing values and the recycling rules. Okay, so then um, if I don't include anything inside the square bracket, it's as if I'm saying just X, right? There's nothing that I want to subset in here, so then just give me the original vector. If I put a zero inside the square bracket, what it's doing is it's just returning a zero length vector. So I'm sub subsetting nothing essentially or a zero element um, or zero element. I don't know how to say that in English, but essentially when I do X subset zero, it's just gonna return a zero length vector. Um, okay, so if we have character vectors, so that means that I have named my the elements of my vector. For example, so I have that my first element is named A, my second element element is gonna be named B, the third one is C, and the fourth one is D. Those are just the names that I set for my elements, for my for the elements of, in my vector. I can then subset by using those exact names, but they have to be matched exact. That's the only caveat here. And they have to be inside uh, single quotes or double quotes. Um, I don't know how you, if you guys have like a preference on using single quotes or double quotes. I am a single quotes kind of person when I'm working in R. Um, I feel like double quotes, they just look like there's just clutter. I don't know why. But anyway, I think the majority of people does um, Double quotes. Anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm just subsetting the element called D, B, and A, and that's the order that I'm gonna get from my Y um, from my Y vector. Mm, yeah. Also, I hope I'm, I hope. Yeah, that's true. I'm not a data scientist, so I use single uh, quotes, hoping that doesn't mess anything up. But maybe there is. So if if there is, please someone chime in and correct me if I'm wrong. But for the most part, I think it's good. So. Anyway, uh, and you can again repeat the names, right? Like with uh, integer indices. When subsetting uh, with the square brackets, remember that the names must be matched exactly. If not, um, you're, you're not gonna return the elements that you want. So here, for example, if I have a Z vector or a Z vector, and then I name my elements A, B, C, and D, E, F, if I use A or D, just because that's the first letter that it starts with, it's gonna return an A because it's not gonna find, I mean, whenever you subset, element A does not exist and element D does not exist either. They have to be A, B, C, or D, E, F. The names must match exactly. When we have a list, Subsetting essentially works the same way, but you have to remember that if you use single square bracket or single square brackets, what you're going to get in return is going to be a list. And if you use double uh, square brackets or the dollar sign, then you're going to get a vector. You're, you're actually essentially pulling elements out of a list. So this is just the only caveat to remember when working with lists. Um, so let's see an example here. If I have a list that has three elements, which are named A, B, and C, and each one has uh, a vector inside, if I want a return list, then what I do is, for example, if I want just the second element in my list, I just use single square brackets, right? And say two inside, so I want the second element, like the eggs and box of eggs example oh yeah that's a yeah do you have like that um do you want to say that Olivia? i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure someone i've made uh, i made like some some image of it like so when you subset with the um, i don't know if it's eggs and bugs eggs a uh, list i don't know if you're gonna get something <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> pythons so maybe maybe like image maybe I don't know. I'm pretty sure someone have met it, but like, I don't know if you would be able to find it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. basically, like when you subset with the single bracket, you are getting the 
the eggs and the box of the eggs. And when you are subsetting with a double square, you're just getting your eggs. Like it's it's work also with cats and box of cats. So you have you put cats into the box and then you are like, as I use, and you can put like multiple of box of cats and then you, you subset that. But I don't, if I found letters, I will show them, but yeah. I, yeah, I, I oh yeah, but it's here. It's is another one. one. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the one. I'm not sure if it's inside the, I don't remember. I don't think it's in the book, no, because this was after that, maybe. I don't remember. But this is um, an example, similar example. And I, I'm going to make it a point to find the box with the cats. I think I've seen that one. The egg, I don't know if I have. But essentially, this is what you're saying. Um, that you have your list, which is going to be X. And then you want to use single square brackets to subset one element, but it's returning a, the same format, which is a list, right? And then if you do the, sing, uh, the double square brackets for two, two, square, two square brackets, then you're going to pull out the vector inside it, which is your packet of pepper. And then the other one, which is exactly what we're gonna see right now. But I think it's the same example that you were just saying. Yeah, I'll see if I find the cats one. I think I'm pretty sure I've seen that one. And I'll put it on the Slack channel um, so that we can all have it too. All right, so let's, um, where I was here. Yeah, so if I, again, just, just use a single square bracket, it's returning a list. And if I use double square brackets, then it's returning the vector, then whatever is inside your list. Uh, yeah, that's another, yeah, that's another example too with students in a class. Yeah, I guess any object contained inside a container, yeah, works the same way. All right, the other way that you can also return a vector is by using the dollar sign, and then you have your, um, your subsetting using the dollar sign. So you have your list, and then you say, I just want the name of your element. That's the only caveat that, that you have with dollar sign. And now in our studio, I think this was um, implemented a few versions ago. You, when you put the dollar sign and then you do tab, then it's gonna show you all the possible names that you have, if I remember correctly, so that then you can just choose using tab and the arrows in your keyboard. But anyway, essentially, uh, this is what you have. And if you want to remember the names of all your elements, because there are so many, you can do that tab thing, or you can go to the console and say, names my list, and then it will show you all the names of your list so that you can just then select the one you want, right? Like just copy that specific name. Okay. Anyway, uh, if you want a specific element in your list, not necessarily the whole vector, Um, wait, someone asked a question. Let me see. So, yeah, yeah the, my question. Sorry, I just wanted to not to disturb you. So, you no, know, when you said that giving getting the one one list, right? So, one name, one name out of the whole class names, you are using double brackets, right? Mm -hmm. So, the first one is that is a list, and that you are getting one name out of the list is by using double brackets. So in this example that you showed, no, 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 don't, don't go up, up. Uh, the dollar sign also is giving entire list. So this dollar sign and this one are interchangeable or is it only for the list and other one is for vector? Um, yeah, so is it, are you clarifying something or? Or are you asking a question? I mean, asking asking that question. So can I use that by interchangeably, you know? Well, yes and no. So if we see, let's go to an example. Okay. Let me copy this. And then let's go to our studio. I hope you can see my R studio here. <laughs> no. Sorry. You can't. Okay. I can't do a new share screen one. Okay, I think now you can see my R studio. Yeah, hope I'm okay. clear. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to understand the concept. No, 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 this is, this is, yeah, exactly. No, this is what the book club is for, so that we can all understand what we're talking about. 
So let's say I have this list. Let's see that list. So this list has three elements. The first one is, um, so this is gonna be, if I wanna see the contents of each one, let's do that here. So I'm gonna do in the console here, my list, and then I do dollar sign, and then you're gonna see all those options, right? So if I do A, it's gonna show me the elements of the A, of the element A inside my list. But if you do the same thing, with um with the double brackets, double squared bracket, then you do for example one, and it's gonna show yes. you exactly the same thing. Yes, are they yes. so I think you're asking me if they're interchangeable. Yes. So I think the difference is that here, I don't know if I could also do this. That's my let's just check. Oh no, it's it also yeah. So I guess yeah, they're interchangeable. Unless someone else needs to yeah, I mean, that, that was hunting yeah, me for only if it, mm -hmm. That's true, only if it's named, because if my, if I have the same thing, but they are not named, I guess it wouldn't work. Let me see if I can do this like this. I guess one way to think about it is that the, um, when you, when you want to, when you want to index some vector or some list, right? The, yeah. the objects in that vector or list can be named or they can be unnamed. If they're unnamed, then there's no way to use the dollar sign because the dollar sign specifically refers to names. Oh, exactly. mm -hmm. okay. So it only yeah. works when you have named elements, yes. Yes, and, and the names, names themselves are objects in R, right? So that's why you can use double bracket see exactly like what Joe is saying. You can do double bracket and then make a vector, but because that vector object is a name of something, you can refer to it. Yes, exactly. And then what Joe is saying in the comments is also important. This is like the, whatever we're, we're gonna see right now, the, the second part of the thing that I'm just reading, but let's just see it right now. Mm -hmm. um, so she's saying, Joe, do you wanna explain that? I'm just going to copy it here in my console. Joe? Oh, so no worries, no worries. I'll do it then. Um, so she's saying that, for example, if you do inside the square brackets, but you put a vector inside the square bracket, the double square bracket. So let's do that here. Let me just do the first, my list. And then if we do this, it's going to give me the same thing as if I do it with saying, I want the first, so that this is, this first square brackets, this one means the first element of my list, which is going to be A, and this second one, oh, oops, sorry, which is going to be the same thing that I have here, right? It's going to give me the second element inside the first element of that list. So if we see it here, it's going to be the one, right? The first element of my list, which is A, and then the two, which is in the second set of brackets, is going to give me the second object of that list. So essentially, it's doing my list one. It's the second element, right? It's this fault. So yeah. Thank you, Joe. All right, so then um, that's that part right here. Hello, Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I think someone has on un has unmuted their uh, um their microphone. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. And Olivier is also saying that dollar sign. Yeah, it's only valid when we have named elements of our list in our list. Uh, yes. I don't think it's even work for name elements in uh, if the element is the object is not recursive according to the documentation. But we, so I was wrong before. I think like the according to the documentation, and if you ask to print the the dollar sign, it's a primitive, so you need to check like uh, some C code to know what exactly it does. 
So it's 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 not R code. It's it's uh, if you if you for example like just do dollar sign, if you just print it like that, if you are typing it in the chat, you will get a, a primitive um, about it. So it's 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 a it's a C implementation behind the scene, and uh, you need I, I never uh, able to find quickly the C codes. But yeah, according to the help, dollar sign is only valid for recursive objects and null for some reason. So if your vector is null, it will work. <laughs> <laughs> I am so used to um, the tidyverse. I never work like this, you guys, ever. I mean, I know about this, obviously, but I'm just, I'm just so like select and I don't know. I'm, 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 I rarely work with just vectors. I guess I'm more, yeah, lists, data frames, but I use the tidyverse. I don't, I don't do this subsetting with the yeah, it's, oh, right. it's, it's also a good point. Like sometimes you just use like the deployer verb and it works fine, but yeah. Yeah, but I think it's yeah. important to know this. Um, yeah, to know the basics of each one of, of, the, of the two styles, right? But anyway, let's move on. So here, um, so essentially what we were just doing with the double set of double brackets, right? Um, so we have here, the first one is always gonna be, depending on if you have, two double brackets or one, right? But in this example, we want the second element, so the second vector of our list, and we want the third element, which is gonna be G. So that's how you read it. The other way of seeing this is if you have named elements, it's gonna be my list. I want the B element, but I want that vector, right? And then the third element in that B list. So that is, um, the way you subset single specific elements. And you can also do it a combination of dollar sign and double square brackets, which you can do this thing right here, my list uh, with double brackets B. It's the same thing as saying my list dollar sign B because your elements are named. So then you're extracting them either with double brackets or with a dollar sign but I want the third element. So then that's what I'm getting. All right. So now let's move on to matrices and arrays. Um, so this is a little a little different, but it's, it's very simple to understand too with these examples. So essentially you can subset um, matrices or arrays, which I, I hope everybody's um, clear on what a matrix or what an array is. If not, then please put it in the comments and then we can see an example here real quick. But um, essentially you can subset higher dimensional structures, which are matrices and arrays in three different ways. With multiple vectors, with a single vector, or you can subset a matrix with a matrix or an array with a matrix. So let's say we have this first, um, this example, our, we're gonna, call an object A, and it's going to be essentially a matrix with three rows and four columns. And we have these elements 1 to 12. Those are going to be the values inside our matrix. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3 are going to be in the first column, 4 to 6 on the second column, and so on and so on. And we're going to name our columns as A, B, C, and D. So if I want just a single row from that matrix, what I do is I put inside the square brackets and think of it as having two dimensions here. The first, and those two dimensions are separated by a comma. So the first dimension is gonna represent, <clears throat> so sorry, are gonna represent rows. And the second dimension, or the second thing which is after the comma is gonna represent your columns. So in this case, what I want is the first row and all the columns. So because I don't include anything after the comma, it's going to read it as everything, right? Give me all the columns that we have. So with our object A or our matrix A, give me the first row and all the columns. So that's exactly what I have here in the in the return. So that's what it printed, I suppose. If I want just a single column, then I include all the rows, but I just want everything that's inside column one, right? Like our first column. 
So then that's going to be um, one, two, three, right? Like all the elements that I have in column three. If I want a single element, then I do, I put or I include a value inside each one of my two dimensions. So it's going to be the first row and the first column. So the intersection of those two, right? Like the first row and the first column. That's going to give me uh, a single. If I want two rows from two columns, then I just have to separate them by column, by using column. So it would be from my first dimension or from my rows, I should say. I want the first to the second rows. And then my columns, I want the third to the fourth. So that's exactly what I have here. I have the first row of columns three and four. So then that's how I put them inside the square brackets. Um, the other way that I can also use or that I can also put inside my, to specify what elements of my row I want or what rows I want is to use logical vectors or logical vectors, which would be true, false, true, means the first row, not the second, but yes, the third row. So that's what I want. And then I just want my columns that I already named B and A. So that's another way of subsetting matrices too, by using logical vectors and the name of my column. What happens if I include zero and what happens if I include a negative index here with matrices? So it's a little different. If I do zero, that means I don't want any rows. And the negative, which can also be used for um, for rows two, if I remember correctly. Um, so this is going to be do not include the second column, which is why I only have the A, C, and D. I am not including B, which it was which was my second column. Um, now this is a little. This is again super easy, but it's but you sort of have to pay attention to this, right? You can subset a matrix with a matrix, and this is how it works. Imagine we're still working with our A matrix. So let's just recall what our A matrix looks like. I'm gonna move to our studio. I think everybody can see here. So let's say I have here, this is my A matrix. So let's do this B, okay. I'm gonna print them in the console here. So, oh, my A matrix looks like this. And this is the B matrix that I want to subset. Oh, that's true, Joe. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. So instead of just saying call names or something, we can just say it. Yeah, actually, that's that's a good comment to to add. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we we, we just subset the names of our columns. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So let's go back to subsetting a matrix with a matrix. So we have a matrix here, and we have b matrix here. What I want to do is this, subset matrix A by using matrix B. So how does this work? I am saying this is going to be the first row, this one, and this is going to be the third column. So give me whatever it is on the first row, but it's the third column. So it's the seven value. That's the first thing that I want. And then the second object that I want is located in the second row, but it's the fourth element. That's what I have here, right? So it's going to be this 11. So that's how um, the matrix is reading the subsetting. So it's going to give me rows, columns, right? And then the second one is going to be rows, columns. This is how you, how you can read it. Okay, let's try Joe's example now that I explained this matrix subsetting. Okay, so we were saying with the zero, where is that one? Okay, this one. So if we have this, now let's try to assign a zero comma two. 
oh yeah, it's returning zero integer. So it's, hmm, I wonder if I do print here. No, it doesn't work. Try so minus two. Oh, it's minus two. <laughs> Could be know. that that was my mistake. Wait. Just to be sure. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No worries. Minus two. And then, oh no, it did. Well, did it work? So. Integer zero, one, three. And can you, sure. can you, can you ask the, yeah, structure, yeah. So it's a it's a named it's it's written oh no. So it's not it's not a vector of the names. It's it's still a list. It should be a it matrix. Yeah, yeah, it's a matrix. Yeah, it's it's so it preserves the structure of A and it's still just giving you ah, yeah. but then we could you and then keep the attribute, yes. Oops. Yeah, it's we have because your your matrix is empty. A zero. Yeah. Then I don't know. Maybe there's a way to extract them, but you know, it's a list. Yes, there is. Like you have like the your attributes. Uh if you use attribute on something, but like this is dangerous. <laughs> yeah, maybe there is. Maybe there's a way. Just back. try. Maybe try call name on the NM. Yeah. Oops. Oh. No. oh yeah, just a S. Give me say S. No, you you are correct. Just I think it's names. Uh, names. And no call names. Sorry, call names is the S. Yeah. Yep. Ah. But like, I don't know if it's correct or not. Like, I have no idea. Let's try to assign NM to all names NM. And then ah, you get the vectors. No, that's the only way by using call names. But then it's, it's like doing the same thing, but with A. Yeah, NM2. Yeah, then, yeah, it doesn't, I don't think it works then. Moving on. So setting a matrix with a matrix. Okay, we just saw those examples. Let me see if there's something else that we didn't see here. No, I think this one is exactly the same one. So we can move on. Um, okay, so then if we have data frames and tables, so we saw atomic vectors, we saw lists, we saw how to subset matrices and array. Now, how do we deal with data frames and tables? So um, data frames act like both lists and matrices, but tables are a bit different. So when subsetting with a single index, data frames are going to behave like lists and indexes. So you can do the single bracket things just to extract the first two columns. But when subsetting with two indices, they behave like matrices. So DF123, that's going to be the rows and then the columns, right? names and call names. I think names is going to give you the names, all the elements inside the list. So let's see this example. So if we have this, my list here, and you have A, B, and C. So if you do names, oops, my list, it's going to give you that A, B, and C, because those are the elements of your list. If you do call names, my list is not, not going to work because you don't have, it's not a data frame, right? But if we do um, call names and then we do a, oops, call names. Now is it double bracket? A, which one, which, oh, none of this one has column call names, right? No, it has to be a data frame. It, it has to be something that already has. Um, do I have an example here? Oh yeah, A, A is the one that has them. So if I do whole names, 
a wrong uh, wrong parentheses get you need to wrap them i need to call them it's a function part. yeah so call so name. i would have to do a subset a i suppose yeah no, and, then pass, and then you can pipe it to uh like a. for example and then i don't i don't think the vector is his name here yeah but i did for the a oh okay but call names works with vectors right uh, call yes. name should work with vectors. Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Can, can you print call name? We can see. Just call names. Yep. No. Cool. Well, you can ask the. Uh, or just, uh, just, just print the. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can see what it does. Call names essentially is going to return the names of the column if you have a data frame. But if you yeah. have a name, if you have a vector and your vector elements are named. Could it work too? I'm ready. <laughs> if is that a frame? Else <laughs> end call. We choose end call. I, I don't know what end call does, the big end call. Like we need to check. I think we should uh, we can check that for letters offline and we should okay. pursue. But that's a great question. I, I didn't think about all of that. Yeah. But essentially call names, if we see that documentation, just to answer that question. It's going to retrieve, or um, you can also use it to name the column names of a matrix like object. But it also, I think it also works with data frames too. Okay, so essentially here, okay, let's go back to data frames and tables. So if we have, let's say we have um, this, we all know by now the penguins example. If you don't, then it's just a data frame from this package called Palmer Penguins, and it has a lot of information about penguins. So it's essentially a data frame. So if we want to subset that data frame, so we only want either columns or rows or something like that, then how do we work that, right? Using the brackets and double brackets and all of that. So let's name an object two calls because we're gonna extract two columns. So from our data frame penguins, what we want is inside single brackets, two, two, three, it's gonna extract the second and the third or the second to the third columns. So when we have just those two numbers inside the single brackets, then what it's doing, it's just extracting columns. So essentially it's select if you are familiar with um, tidyverse. And this is exactly what we have here. All the all the rows, but just from the second and the third um, column. And if your columns are named, which a data frame usually has that, then you can also subset by using the names of your columns, like what we have here. Inside the single square brackets, it works exactly the same way. Um, when we have them, when we have these indices separated by commas, what it's going to give me is going to be, again, rows and columns, exactly like we were seeing with lists and with everything else. So if I do penguins, I want the first to the second row and then the third to the fourth um, column. So essentially, that's exactly what I have here. But notice that it's returning a data frame, right? Like this is, I so I have a, data frame and then it's giving me again a data frame. What I can't do is subset like this, saying for example, inside double square brackets and then a single bracket like we were sort of doing before. That doesn't work, but it does work if I put the second one. So if I do give me the third column, and inside the third column, give me elements one to four, if this is what I wanted to do. I cannot select multiple columns, but I can select one. Or the equivalent, which is using the dollar sign to extract the name of the list, right? So by using the name, not the list, sorry, the name of the column, that's what I have here. And now give me the first to the fourth rows of that column. So that's the other way of doing it. 
with a single bracket. However, when we have a table, the single square bracket will always return a table. This is the question. This is the thing. So when I'm doing data frames, if I use a single square bracket, I will get a vector but the table will always return a table. So that's what we are seeing here with preserving the dimensionality. So data frames and tables, that's super important to know, they're gonna behave differently. Yeah, and Gabby, I'll just say, field. just yeah. to say from personal experience, uh, uh, I've, I've run into problems, right, with productionized code where I built something like custom functions assuming a data frame was going to be my input. And so I use that matrix style of subsetting would, you know, it, to, to pull in vectors essentially. And then you attempt to feed in a table and you get an error message. So um, I feel like, yeah, this is an area where it's really easy to, to make, make a mistake somewhere. Yes, it is. And you know what? It's super important. I didn't know this, but I do, I knew that they were different. But I didn't know that they that this is what happens when you're subsetting, like the data frame will return a vector, but the table will return a table. And this is also important when you are working with the tidyverse, but other people are working or created a function in a package that is assuming that you're just gonna be using base R. I have a very specific example of a package of something that I work with. Um, I'm an ecologist, so this is a package that works like that. And I was getting error after error after error because when the person that designed and created this package didn't know anything about table, and I had prepared all my data and cleaned all my data using the tidyverse, and what I had was a table, and then I tried to use this package, this function from the package, and it didn't accept my table. And I didn't know why until I contacted the developer and he told me, what the hell is a table? I need a data frame so that I can give you a vector. And I'm like, ah, always do when you finish your tables, ask data frame. Sometimes that's important. So you do like the um, your pipe and then ask data frame so that it doesn't remain a table or something. So that's, I don't know if that, that made that's any a, sense to that's, me. Yeah, that, that's right. That is a quick fix for it, right? Um, yeah, yeah, because so this is, good, good is super important. Yeah, thank you, Aaron, mm -hmm. for, for saying that because, it, it, yeah, I didn't know this, but I did sort of knew that they were different in a way. So then now we all know. Okay, so... Um, so just a quick thing. I, I really do not know much about it, but can't we make an explicit conversion or you know conversion of a data frame to a table a table to a data frame checking at their attributes when you're writing a function so that it can be generalized yeah you get you, you can you can you can check uh, if the object is a data frame you have a yeah. is data frame object and you have also a is table which i think is write it differently it's probably is underscore table I, i'm not sure about that one but you can check and you can convert both of them because the, uh, is it is table? It's underscore. underscore. Yeah, it's underscore. Yeah. I never know, like by, uh, by hertz. Is table? No, I don't know where it is. It's, I don't know. Uh, it's probably in the library table, by the way, but it's probably loaded. Uh, library library table. table. Yeah, of course yeah. it will be. <laughs> or Erlang. I don't know. Yeah, it's go. here. Yeah. The other one is deprecated. Yeah. So it's, it's deprecated. Yeah. yeah. But you can convert true. both of them. Like, uh, and if you check the class of a table, it should be a class data frame and a class table, if I remember correctly, uh, on the attributes. Yeah. And the quick, a... and the quick fix, like Gabby will will say, like you can set up the drop drop argument in the in the in the square bracket, single square bracket. Yeah. Yeah. It's table. <clears throat> uh, what is it? Info? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. But if we want to convert them, all we do is info and then uh, ask table, maybe? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And then yeah. Let's check. Is table info? No, you, you, oh. didn't, you, you didn't assign it, but oh. that's fine. 
It's always yeah. something, isn't it? <laughs> you can, no, you can do the right wing assignment if you want. If you want to bother everyone. <laughs> uh, I didn't want yeah. that. I didn't want that. I don't know. I never used that assignment, so I was like, yeah. Right. Yeah, and um, you can store yeah you can store this one and write a function to make sure you are explicitly handling your data frame or a table, right yeah yes i suppose you could i don't know how you would do that but for now i just show that example that you can definitely no no i'm just logically thinking when you said there's a practically a problem then i was just thinking okay if i have to do it then i it's my good practice whether to check for a table or a data frame and then go ahead and do it right yeah, you can you can write the if check and if it's one like uh, do that and if the other one do nothing or do other stuff. Yep. Okay. Uh, for okay. just for my reference, uh, thank you. Yeah, no worry. All right, so let's continue here. Um, so we can I um, can I also ask a question about this section? Sure. Yes, yes, yes. So like, can you like find the class of a tibble? Can you do class and then a tibble? You you see that there are like three values in that class, table df, table, and then data.frame. Yeah. So I think this makes me think that like tables are data frames. Yes, I'm wondering like, So like data frame is like the superset of tables. Um, um I, I, I... I think the method dispatch, which we're going to see later, so it's a dispatch uh, of an S3 object, it checked the, I think, the order of dispatching. If, Debbie, can you do, sorry, class test? Mm -hmm. Class, the function, and class uh, function and test. I think it go first for table GF. And the, then if, for example, like you do not have, a method for table df is going to go to table and then for data frame. Let's say, like, yeah, that's what have... I thought, Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, we're going to see that later. So maybe we can, like, uh... so, like, yeah. going back help? to Aaron's point, like, when you input a, a, um, a data frame, or yeah. sorry, when you input a, yeah, when you input a data frame, but you're expecting a table. Wouldn't the method dispatch work in a way that you're using a table method? I'm not I sure think if I'm saying this correctly. But... I, I, I think if you expect a data frame and you have a table, it will dispatch for data frame, so you'll be good, yes. Because like it will try, the dispatch will go table df. No, it's not. Then it will go for table. No, it's not. Then it go for data frame, then dispatch the method for data frame. I don't right. know if I answer your question. However, the other way around. We're going to see that in the later chapter when this is S3 method. Oh. But uh, this is this is like basically how uh, S3 works. And I think, I don't know if I answered your question correctly, but like if yeah. you provide a data frame to a method that wants a table, uh, that, that want, it, will, it will try the, table, the first uh, three class, then go to the third one, and then it will search in the namespace if it has the in multiple namespace, first in the namespace where you are, then in parent namespace, et cetera, et cetera, until you get like something. And if you don't find, you will get an error. But we're going to see that later. <laughs> I, I think this is a good segue into the, the, the section that Gabby was just talking about, where, where there's like a default argument for things like data frames where it's the drop equals true. Yeah. Um, if you were to set that to false, right, it would operate more like a, a, a tibble. Yep. Um, and I, th I believe the tibble kind of overwrites that default that, that the data frame uses. Exactly. Yes, probably. But, yeah. I so think it, it, it part... changes the default behavior of a data frame to, to drop equals false. Yeah. If you yes. don't want to resort to tibble, you can always do that, yes. Then the square bracket will not simplify, which is the default argument of the function squ single square bracket. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I think, yeah, the drop equals false is the way to go here. I don't know about functions and stuff like that because I'm not that good at developing packages just yet. So I don't want to, so I, I will let Olivier talk about that. And thank you. No, for no worry. We, we, you will be an expert when we reach that chapter, Gabby. 
<laughs> it's oh, letters, no. chapters, <laughs> chapter 13, I think. No worry. <laughs> So then, but if we are just talking about data frames and matrices, yeah, I think definitely the way to go here is drop equals false, because when you're doing, um, when you're do dealing with a data frame, it will preserve the dimensionality if you use the drop equals false, and the table will, will return a table frame. So then that's the example that we have here, the table, your subsetting, and you're exactly returning a table. And then when you are uh, the, the first line of code was checking it. So and then you subset. And this so one. Yeah. So then this one, when you have the data frame, no, this is the table right there. So you have a table. You are subsetting, you only want the A column. Is the name of the column? Yes, the A column, but you use drop equals true. You then get a vector because it's dropping the dimensionality. The drop is referring to that dimensionality. So you're saying, do you want it to be preserved as a table? So that's the again the again the opposite, right? Do you want to drop the dimensionality? Then you set it to true. Then you return or you get a vector in return. Yeah, that's that's how you say it. But when you have a data frame. And you subset the way that we're seeing here, that we're subsetting a column, which is A in this case, you get a vector. That's what we were explaining, right? But if you subset, but include the drop equals false, then you get a data frame because you're, you're saying, do you want to drop the dimensionality? No, false, right? So then we preserve the dimensionality of the data frame. So then exactly what we were just saying. And to finish this chapter, let's just see factors. And this to me, you guys, this is this is where I, I cannot, and I would just return to Dplyr or the tidyverse, because then factors and subsetting, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, if you're dealing with factors and you want to subset uh, whatever vector you have here, then the drop argument, what it's going to do, it's going to control whether your levels are all preserved or if you are subsetting even the levels too. So let's see an example here. If we have this Z object that has three objects in it, which is A, B, and C, but all of them are factors. We set them as factors. And then those are going to be this levels too. So my levels are going to be A, B, and C. And the name of the objects are also going to be A, B, and C, right? So I am going to subset just the first element or the first factor that's inside my vector. I get an A. Because it's a factor, it's going to give me the levels too. And it's still going to preserve all the levels that I had originally, even though I only have one, one of the factors, right? Or one of the, that it only has one level. But if I include the drop equals true, what it's going to do, it's also going to drop the dimensionality, which in this case are the levels. So it's not going to include the, the other levels. It's just going to preserve the levels that are inside whatever it is that I subset. So, oh my goodness, we still have these other things to go through. I don't know. I'm going to try to go as fast as possible because it's already... One o'clock or twelve o'clock, depending. I on think you can are. you can skim the application that are good to go. I think go straight okay. to application. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go to application. So essentially, what I'm doing here is just what we were talking about: subsetting. Just you just want a single element. We use the double square brackets or the dollar sign, and then uh, you can also whatever it is that you subset it, you can put it inside. Um, an object or make an, uh, your own object with whatever it is that you subset it by using the assign. That's essentially what it's doing there. And then the applications, well, they are just giving us a few examples. So it's essentially, um, if we do here, that's the example, and then oh, this one, the grades and the info. So if we have, um, 
this vector called grade, and then we have a data frame called info, and then I create a vector called ID that has the match grades. So I'm essentially kind of just matching whatever it is that I have in grades combined with the thing right here. So it's not these numbers. Please, this is a, a mistake. I don't know whoever did it gave up. The no, they are here. correct. They are like but indices. Uh, yeah, if you check, for be... example, D, I think they are, I don't, I think they are correct now. It's matching grades with info grades. Yeah, but it's so, this numbers. It should be four, see, one, so three, C, five. C is in the three. Two. So then it's saying that D is going to be on the fourth position. So this is what the four means. So it shouldn't be this numbers. It should, it should have gave you this four, one, three, uh, two, five. Because it's, it's saying it's, that it, D. I think it's reverse. So it's matching it's C to C. Let me show you. I don't let's know what try that it. is. Let, but... That's good to try. This is a good example. Match is always tricky. OK, so let me run this here. Yeah, yeah, sure. So you see the, names, the numbers that I have here are not the oh, same ones that are in the book. So correct. whoever did that example, it just, I don't know. They, I don't know. It's an error, but whatever. You will need to put, to make a pull request, Gabby. I know. I just have been having <laughs> issues with my GitHub. And then this thing doesn't want to need anyway. But um, so essentially what I want you to focus on is not these numbers are these ones. I'm going to explain to you what this match function did. So it's just saying that from grades, so this element D that it's in grades, it's going to match it to the other column that I have in my second data frame. It's the fourth element. So that's the fourth that I have here. And then A, it's going to be the first element on my second, this second vector that I have here. So that's the one that you see here. Three just means that C, it's the, it appears on the third position in the other vector. And B is the second and F is the fifth. Moving on. If I want to then subset using ID, this ID that I already created, this object that has like the matches. But now I want to subset that ID from info. So I just want these elements, this fourth position, this first position, blah, 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 as my rows, right? So I want my fourth row, first row, third row, blah, 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 and all my columns. Then that's what I, that's how I do it. I don't know. It's, it's a little yeah, convoluted I... because I'm adding this match function, but essentially I'm just subsetting. It's a this cool one, for example. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a cool example of how you can do a quick merge with match. I never use match too much, but I should use it more. It's powerful. Yeah, I don't use match either. I feel like that's there's probably an equivalent in tidy R that I'm using that I can't think of right now, but I don't use match that often. So but anyway. Is it, is, it um, from, is it different from joints? Yeah, it's a join. Is it Oh, it's a join. No. Yeah, it's 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 work as a join, but it's not exactly a join because you are real we are duplicating the like you are probably duplicating row in some cases. So you can think of it as a join. Yeah. yeah kind it of is, like a join. It is a kind of a join. Okay. So let's yeah. move on so that we can finish. Um so then imagine that we have this data frame called empty cars, which is already loaded in base, right? And then what I want is this has my rows. Um, so what I'm doing here, let me show you. I already have it here. So empty cars is going to be this data frame, this complete data frame. But what I want is um, just a sample. So give me a sample from all of this for my rows. Remember, this thing that I have right here, this is for my rows. That's what I'm subsetting here. And then the second element, which is empty in this case, where it's my uh, my mouse right now, this is signaling columns. So I want all of them. But what I want for my rows is just a sample of three elements that are inside here, my empty cars. So if I just run this, this is going to give me three 
because I said it to be three, three random numbers, but it has to be obviously it's not gonna give me a thousand because I just want it to be, uh, that's why I said this n row empty cars so that it's just between those numbers of the number of rows that I have. So if I run this again, because I'm doing sample, it's gonna give me other random numbers. Oh, whoops. This is three, but there, there we go. So then it's just extracting three random rows, but giving me all the columns, as we can see here. Um, we can also order, and again, me, dplyr, but sure, let's use base. So you can order your rows like this. For example, you want all the columns, but I want my rows to be ordered by um, this, this column, mpg. So this is the way you would do it. So then it goes from um, in order, right? Like 10.4, 13.3, blah, 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 all the way up to the highest number of miles per gallon. Um, and then what is this one? Um, by using rep. Oh, so I guess what I'm doing here is if I, again, have like the um, my table or I have a table here, and then for my rows, what I want to do is just expand the count of the column. And I'm repeating the same number. So, yeah, essentially, let's do this thing. So let's say I have here my data frame. Let's see what it looks like. So that's my data frame here. But look at the returning thing that I have here. It's repeating certain things, certain patterns. So how do I do it? So what I have here is this is going to give me just the number. So for that um, N column, it's just saying 213. And this 1 to N row DF is just giving me the number of like the rows that I have. So I have 1, 2, and 3. I want this repeated, this pattern. I want it repeated. So it would be, so this one, which is the first thing that I have, I want it repeated two times. So that's one, one. Then the sec the two that it's coming, like the second object that I have here, I want it just repeated once. And then three, I want it repeated three times. So that's, that's the, the thing that I'm repeating here. And I want all the columns. So it's gonna repeat Amy, which is my first, object, it's going to be repeated twice, right? That's the one one that I have here. Then Julie, which is my second one, it's just going to be repeated once. And then Brian, which is my third one, it's going to be repeated three times. So that's essentially what I'm doing here and all the columns. Um, and then if I want to remove a certain column, then what I do is um, subsetting. So I want my data frame but I want all my rows, but just my first column, that's what I get. And if I say, uh, oh, deleting a column, then they would be null. So then what I do is data frame, dollar sign, the name of my column, and then I set it, or I assign null to that, that what it's gonna do is it's gonna remove this end column from my data frame. Um, selecting rows based on a condition, I can also subset by saying, I want this column, which is gear, to be all the values that are equal to five, give me just those rows. And then that's what I have here. And I can also use um, logical and integer things to subset here. So if I have, for example, um, let me see, what's this one doing? Oh which it's going to be a function to say which of these, um, which of my elements are included in this condition that I have, which is this one that I just set. And then it's just going to select those objects. Um, let me just put that here real fast. So if we do, for example, 
x1. So this is going to be 1 to 10. So I have 10 elements here. Um, from 1 to 10. Wait a minute. What is it? Yeah, telling? yeah, it's correct. Oh, it's just tech if it's uh, if it's uh, divided by two on it. Yeah. So one now, so two yes. So all numbers from yeah, one to ten yeah. that are divisible. I never know odd and even which one is which one. So. <laughs> so one is not divisible by two. Yeah. Two obviously two, yes. Yeah. Three. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah. Four and then is... if you... yeah. And then if you ask if which. I... Which return the indexes? So which are just the true ones, right? Which are yeah. the ones that are divisible by two? This is exactly what this is giving here, yep. which is going to be two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah. And then if I say um, the same thing, but it's divisible by five, it's essentially it's giving me the same thing. So that's yeah. the other way to work with, um, with subsetting. And then that's it, you guys. This was a little bit of a long chapter. I apologize. <laughs> Also, Thank I you, tend Gabby. to over explain. So I am going to select chapters that are small moving forward because I over explain sometimes. But yeah, thank you guys. No, good job. Thank you. Uh, I will end. Uh, you didn't want to 